Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. This will be part two of my uh, video regarding resining um, step by step, front to back, all the steps. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I should have mentioned in the video prior to this, uh, video number one, was some in important information. So as I told you before, this is a two-step process. I've decided to do this particular piece in two layers. So what I didn't mention yesterday is that when you are mixing your resin and calculating the amount of resin you need, you divide that by two. You half it right away. So for example, this piece, 20 by 24, would normally be two cups of resin to cover the entire thing with one coat. Okay, so two cups for one coat, approximately. According to the art resin calculator, that's what it turned out. But because I know I'm doing two coats, and I only want that first coat to be, you know, just getting rid of some imperfections in the painting and just getting things settled, I half that two cups. So I only mixed one cup yesterday and did this, um, this first coat with one cup, okay? Your second coat, so the coat that we're going to be doing today is about 65% of what the two cups would be. So instead of doing two cups for my final coat, again, it's just a little bit more than 50% because we already have a great coat down. I just need to change or to fill some little gaps here and there. So we don't need the full two cups, only about maybe 65%. So a little bit over a cup uh, this time around. Um, I want to show you what I was talking about yesterday when I had mentioned that my painting had imperfections in it um, and that the resin was going to pull away from those imperfections. It did exactly what I thought it was going to do. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. And I can't seem to figure out how to do that on my phone. So I'm going to show you this way. So I don't know if you can see, but you will see um, where the resin pulls away in some of these areas. I'm not sure if you're picking any of that up, but it's quite noticeable there's a good spot. It's quite noticeable when it happens. There's a few more down here. Anyway, because I knew that was gonna happen, it's the reason why um, I chose one coat, okay? So, moving on. Now that the piece is dry, we have to do two things first. So bear with me for a second. I'm just going to get my tape again. So I've already re-taped three sides. Okay, so I've removed the tape that we had yesterday and I've re-taped three of the sides, but I left one blank because I wanted to show you a few tricks that I've learned over the years. If you find your tape is too sticky and you didn't do the t-shirt test or the towel uh, prep yesterday, grab your hair dryer, okay? If you try to remove the tape too quickly, it may damage the wood and peel back some of the wood. So take your hair dryer and lightly just run your hair dryer over the tape for about maybe 20 seconds or so, and then it'll, it'll reactivate the glue of the tape and you'll be able to pull that tape off fairly easily. A lot easier than without doing that, okay? So there's a trick for you. Next, you're gonna grab your tape and you're going to put down a strip, cut it with an X-Acto knife, and do the t-shirt test so that it just loses some stickiness doesn't become a pain. Now I will warn you, do not let this tape touch your resin. Even if it's dry, don't let your tape touch that resin. It's impossible to get off 
And if you do get it off, it'll leave a tape film that no matter what you use, Windex, a scrub, you can never get it off. It will always show, unless you have a secret that I'm not aware of. And if you do, please let me know, because I've ruined several pieces by letting my tape touch the resin. Okay, so once your tape is on, you're gonna smooth it out, fold it under, make sure everything's nice and tidy. And there you go. So you're gonna do that all four sides, okay? Next, the part that gives most people the most anxiety, sanding. When your piece is nice and dry, you have to sand it down before you put on the next layer of epoxy or resin. If you were not to, if you just poured it on right now, once that top coat dried, you'd actually be able to peel it right off. So you really have to give um, the resin something to bite into the second time around, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your sanding pad or you can actually use an electric sander. But don't be afraid, it doesn't really matter um, how deep the scratches go, because if you use a sander that has say an 80 grit round pad that really scratches things up, well, just grab a 60 grit after that, or sorry, a uh, 100 grit, so a little bit thinner, finer um, sanding pad the next time, and just do over that. So it reduces the severity of the first round of sanding. In this case, I'm using a 70 um, grit block, and you're going to sand the whole piece down, spending extra time on those areas where the resin had pulled away. All right, so here you go. So you just get right to it. Don't be afraid. It's gonna look horrible. It's gonna look all scratchy and gray. And you're gonna have a panic attack and you're like, oh my God, I've ruined my piece. Don't worry about it. It's going to recover, okay? So just keep on going, dig in really deep. Get those muscles going. Everyone who's in isolation and missing their gym workouts, well, this is this is one right there for you. So I'm just digging deep into those spots where the resin did not take very well, making sure that there's some grit in there so I can pour my new coat. Okay, I'm almost done. Let's get this section, get your corners. The one tip I will tell you that I've learned over the years that has helped a lot, make sure that your sanding block is always flat. When you get to your corners, you're gonna be tempted to turn your grit and really dig into those corners. Don't do that. For some reason, if you dig into those corners, and even if you clean it all off and re-pour your resin, it's gonna leave a gray shadow across your piece. So don't do that, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna try my best now to put you back up here so that you can see what I'm doing. Aha, look at that. All right, your next step. Once you have all the sanding stuff done, you can see it's pretty scratched up, it looks horrible, but don't panic, that's the way it's supposed to look. Put your sanding grid away, grab some Windex, water, whatever you want. I like Windex, just to make sure I get all my fingerprints and stuff off the resin surface. And I give it a nice bath in Windex, with a paper, uh, not a paper towel, um, a dish towel. And you just give it a wash. So you're getting rid of all the sanding grit. And you'll see that even by doing that, the painting kind of comes back to life. Okay, but don't let it fool you. It still has tons of scratches on it. And you wouldn't want to sell it like this. Okay. So once that's done, you're going to want to take another towel or um, another paper towel and just give it a nice wash with water just to get all the Windex materials and ammonia and all that kind of stuff off. So I'm just giving it a nice wipe with water. And then 
and dry it off. This is the only time in resin in the resin life cycle, like forever, that you can use paper towel. Okay, just to dry things off. Resin, even when it's completely dry, and if you're selling a piece to a client, never tell anybody to clean their pieces with paper towel. Paper towel is very coarse. And over time, you will see scratches from paper towel. So paper towel is a no-no, except on a stage like this where you're just wiping off a sanded piece. All right, now comes the fun part. I'm just going to step away for a couple seconds and grab my resin, and we'll mix up a new batch. Hold on. should have been more prepared on this part I totally forgot I was I had to mix resin so as I said before the very important um, note from earlier on is your first coat was about 50% of the amount of resin that you wanted to uh, or that you would normally use for a piece so if this piece normally took two cups of resin we only mix one cup for the first coat and for the second one, we're gonna just go a little bit over uh, one cup, just to give it a nice um, flood coat. And a flood coat is where you just, it's exactly what it says, it just floods the whole piece. So that's what we're doing today. So grab whatever resin that you have and find out your calculations. I know my calculations off by heart for my pieces. And I also know it based on the cups that I use. So this is not going to be difficult for me. So you're going to mix your resin. I'm using a one-to-one -one resin, which is quite simple. And you just pour it up. You can use measuring cups. You can use uh, your best guess. Any kind of those, if you had experience doing that, will work, but you're your measurements have to be exact. They, have, they can't be more or less of one or the other. They have to be exact. Otherwise, you risk the resin not curing in certain spots, and that would be a nightmare. And you would have to basically take everything that you've done, re-sand it again, and remix resin, and re-pour the resin, which is a waste of money. All right, so I have my two resins here, and I'm going to combine them just like the first video they're a little bit thick this morning because it's cold here all right so there we go I'll put this one over here and here's your cup that you have to mix so again we mix for about three minutes There's nothing that says you have to go, um, or that says you can't go longer than three minutes. Just depends on where you live. If you live in a warm area, your resin will be much easier to mix. But if you live in a cold area like me right now in winter, it's a little bit thick. So while you're doing that, you can prepare to use your soup cans again, or the tins, or whatever you use to prop up your painting. So get those ready. And like I mentioned before, Art Resin has a great website that breaks down the amount of resin you need for any size of painting that you're doing. So you just type in the length and the width of the painting, and it'll tell you how much resin to pour or to prepare for that piece. Okay, just another minute here for me. So again, I'll say it again, so just that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yesterday's mix was 50% of the normal amount of resin you would have used to cover that piece in a one coat. So, and the reason why is because I knew I wanted to do two coats. 
So last yesterday was 50%. Today is about 60 to 65%. And I'm still under the four cups had I made a mistake. So for example, if we would have made uh, a one coat resin piece and used two cups and I had some pull aways or imperfections and I had to sand it down and re-pour my resin with another two cups, that's four cups of resin. That's like $60 worth of resin right there. So that's why I do a first coat all the time now for bigger pieces because I know it's not going to be perfect the first time. And by using 50% the first time and 60 to 65% the second time, I'm under that, that four cups. So I'm saving money and saving uh, resin. All right, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna set up my cans. My very fancy art cans. And there you go. Nothing too extravagant, but they do the trick. Okay, so yesterday I had mentioned the tools that I use and that we didn't use them yesterday, we used the glove because I wanted just an even distribution. But today I get to use the tools. So it's your little popsicle stick and your spreader. So again, you make sure, oh, one thing I forgot. Put your piece down and go and get your water bottle. Don't forget this step. All right, so I'm gonna put my piece over here so it doesn't get affected. And you're just going to spray the water on your floor, around your piece. The reason why we do that is because dust is our enemy. We hate dust when it comes to resin. And the, the spraying will bring all the larger dust particles down to the floor, okay? So you're gonna do a once over on your painting, make sure that there's no hairs, no beard hairs, no long hairs, nothing that's on your piece. We will grab our resin, do a final stir here and there, and then we will get right to it. So again, we cover our sides in a nice frame, and then the middle. Now normally I would turn my cup over and get all the resin to seep out. But I have another very small project hanging off into the wings there where I'm going to use some of this resin to finish. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is do my edges. So I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm just going to pull the resin to my edges without letting it go over. Okay, so as you become more familiar with resin and as you practice more and more and more, you can do this at a pretty high speed, whereas beginners will spend a lot of time making sure that their edges are perfect, which is a great thing to do, by the way. Don't feel rushed by me. Go at your own pace. I've been doing this for a few years, so I'm quite quick at it. Okay. So just make sure that you're it's consistent all the way down, that you're not missing any spots. Because you've retaped your sides, don't worry if some of the resin is dripping off the sides. Try to keep that to a minimum. You don't want a lot of resin. You don't want to be wasting your resin. But don't worry if a drip or two comes off. And if you're asking, if you had asked before and are still wondering why we changed the tape, it's because if you had any resin that dripped over the sides the last time and you didn't remove the tape and you're putting a second coat, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself that that tape is never gonna come off. 
it will be almost permanently entombed onto that wood, which we don't want. So I like, I don't want to take any chances. So I change my tape after all my steps. Okay, just making sure here. One more edge. So I'm getting a few drops here and there, but nothing too serious. All right. On dark parts, it's really easy to see if you're missing a spot. Okay, so I'm gonna put my popsicle stick down. Now I'm gonna hit the middle of the painting. So I'm gonna take my spreader. I'm just gonna spread the resin out nice and evenly. Now, everyone tells you that resin is self-leveling. And a lot of people, like myself, at the beginning, I used to think that meant self-spreading. And that is not the case. If you pour resin into a little blob in the center of your piece, it's going to stay pretty much a blob in the center of your piece. So you need to spread it. I have to add a little bit more resin. I didn't add enough the first time. Okay. I like keeping maybe about a centimeter of resin active in my cup, just for spots that might pop up over the next hour or so. Now you're probably wondering why I just said that, another hour or so. But once you create your second coat, which is what we're doing right now, this is it. You want this coat to be perfect. You don't want anything wrong with this coat. So you have to babysit it. For the next hour to two hours, you're going to stay at home, not as if you're going anywhere right now, um, but you're going to babysit this piece and get all the bubbles out, um, any imperfections. If you have a pull away um, right now, you can just fix it with the extra resin, just drop some extra resin in there. So you do have to babysit your piece for about two hours. And then after two hours, the resin will start to cure to a point where you really can't make any changes. Um, and you're just going to hope for the best. Now, if you see an imperfection that you cannot fix during those two hours, or even afterwards, you have to accept the fact that you're going to have to sand and reapply once again. Now it does happen, so you're not alone if that ever happens. It happens to all of us. Sometimes you have a perfect resin piece while you're doing it, and then overnight, for some crazy reason, a hair will pop up or show up on your piece and you're asleep and you're having a nice, nice dreams, and you wake up and you have a nasty hair or beard hair or a head hair or cat hair whatever the case may be. So you'd have to sand it down and start again. All right, so I just see an edge here that is not entirely covered. Okay, great. So just like yesterday, it's the same process. You grab your torch and you're gonna turn it on or your heat torch or your blow gun, whatever you have. And just remember, don't over torch it. Don't overheat it. You don't wanna scorch the resin, okay? Here we go. So just like yesterday, you're going to pay special attention to your edges. Bubbles tend to come up on your edges more than anywhere else. And I can already see a part where the resin is not adhering to the edge, so I'll just give it a helping hand with my toothpick or my popsicle stick. And 
and there we go. So now, you should have no bubbles. Give, your, give yourself some time to look through your piece. And also what I like to do, the reason why I like to do resin right here is because I have a bank of windows. So I can just lean over and check my piece and with the reflection of the sun, I can see anywhere where there's, that there's still bubbles. So I still see that in this, my teal section, I still have quite a few bubbles. So I'm gonna do another little run over. And that looks good. So, what I had mentioned before that sometimes happens is I have a little spot down here that I didn't have enough resin. So it's not really covering my edge. So I'm just gonna take my popsicle stick, put a little bit of resin on it, and just drip it on to that edge. And I don't want to put on my blowtorch again because I don't want to risk over torching the resin. So I'm just going to blow on it with my hot breath and it'll break up any bubbles. So, and there you go. All the bubbles are gone. So I'm going to give it a once, one more final look over. Everything looks great. Very happy. Okay. Everything looks wonderful. So once you have that done, again, same as yesterday, you're going to build your shelter. So using a T, I like, I usually have a big TV box, like that one there that I use, but this one doesn't need such a big production. So I just have some old paint cans that I'm gonna use. Give it another look, no bubbles, Great, everything looks wonderful. I'm gonna grab an old painting that I'm going to paint over soon. And there I go. Okay. I also have a tablecloth, a plastic tablecloth that I bought at the dollar store. They're a dollar, obviously. And you can see they're covered in paint. And I just drape it over my fort to keep any dust from coming in. The first coat that we did yesterday, I didn't really care all that much if dust was coming in because we were sanding it down anyway. But the goal this time around is to have no more sanding down. This is it, this is our one-time shot to get it perfect. So that's what we're gonna do. Now it's the waiting game. However, like I had mentioned before, for the next hour and a half to two hours, you are babysitting this piece. So you might have to get yourself a handy little hand flashlight, or make sure that you have very good lighting in the place that you're creating your resin pieces. <clears throat> because every 15 minutes or so, you're gonna lift this tarp, you're gonna look in, and you're gonna see with your flashlight or with the sun, if there are any bubbles or any pieces of dust or any pullaways that are that is happening. And if there are, take your leftover resin and just give them a fix and a little bit more of a torch, but not too much. And then that's that. So don't forget babysitting your piece for about two hours is really important to catch any kind of um, problems that you might have later on because if you don't catch them now it's too late you have to resand and start again tomorrow all right so we're in our fort i will see you tomorrow and we're going to remove the tape prepare the edges and i'll give you some last minute tips and tricks until tomorrow everybody have a good day